package from Kentucky. is the one I guess that's missing the pendulum. Okay, so we need to order a pendulum and connect the back again. And okay, hooks are here, loops are here. The little bird is missing. Missing one hinge. We'll make a new hinge. Hands seem to be in good shape. Uh, need to replace the nut on the hands. That's not the original nut. Okay. We need some. What this is. First thing we will do is take the hands off. That could be something they're using now. Strange looking little nut. Okay. Ready. Oof. Another way up inside. There's a good sign. Put one on that and it's wanting to run. So, got a clock that wants to do that. Usually, not too bad a shape. Five eighteen ninety two. So nineteen ninety two. Somebody names looks like Starn S T S T A R N E or S T A M E. It looks like S T A R N E. Must be the repairer. It says West Germany on the back. Alrighty. 
back off. Gong is okay. Alright, let's take a look. Okay, we're missing. Missing one bellows. So we'll have to, uh, uh, I may have a set in there. I'll have to take a look. Let me check in here. See what I've got here. <laughs> How about that? I happen to have a set right on hand that can go can go right in so I don't even have to order bellows I got some in stock here that size alrighty oh it's a Hubert Hare okay Hubert Hare one day We're missing a lift for a bellow, and I just got a supply of those in, so and it looks like there's the only thing I have to order is a pendulum. I'm gonna need to take the screw out of here. Hmm. That's not gonna work. Hubert Hare. Okay. Well, this would be a different one than we videoed before. We have videoed a Hubert Hare eight day. And uh, now we will do a Hubert Hare one day. Well, keep them matched. We'll probably just replace both of them. And then we'll have new bellow material in them new as well. Okay, little bird. Let's get you free. I'm going to set this aside. Other hinge came out for the door, so I'll get both those hinges in. Not bad. Okay. Uh, somebody's had this out before. Uh, there's one screw missing. I see two screws missing. One screw isn't screwed back in all the way. Probably was too big. One screw is a Phillips head, so that's a replacement. And I'm going to get these out of here. Whoa, this one isn't even screwed down. Phillips, we'll put the proper screws back in there when we're done. Okay. And there's, there's our little movement. Okay.
Okay, it has a plastic dial on it, so relatively modern. Always got to check inside the cases. When they're coming from the south, wouldn't want there to be a black widow spider or something in there. Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at this movement. You see, it's uh, pretty tarnished. Needs good cleaning. There's the front. There's that Phillips screw just fell out of there. We won't be putting that back in. Okay, see clips. Alright. Let's see what we got. Whoa. That is really bound up for some reason. We'll see what's going on there. Okay. Click works on that one. Looking inside. other glasses here so I can see. Okay. Yeah. Get a little bird's nest in there. Needs a good cleaning. Got some fuzzies. It's just many, many years probably hung in the kitchen. Okay, there she is. Yeah, things are kind of bent up in here. Okay, well, we'll take that apart and see what's going on with it. Take the lift wire off of here. spring here that runs the uh, hammer. Okay, and it comes return. And then that slides out through that little slot. And the short one turns. These are the lifts for the cuckoo balls. This turns, comes out, okay. Alright, let's take some C clips off of here, or E clips off of here that hold these parts on to get the lifts off. Let's take this, well, let me get this bird out of the way so we don't break him. clip here on the intermediate gear because it holds everything else on. Just to just get in that slot. Pull it off. On the e clip. Right now with that coming off, that washer comes off of there. Try to keep my hands out the way of the camera. That washer comes off. That allows this now to pull off. Maybe. Nope. Ah. What was that snagged on? Yeah, that rack was snagged on that somehow. Well, the rack and the center are going to have to come off at the same time, so let's get that e clip out of there, too. Thing 
things should lift off at the same time. Like so. Okay. Alright. And then our intermediate gear can come off. And that stays on. Here's our gathering pallet that lifts the, the strike mechanism. Let's, uh, there's E-clips that hold these two levers on. They're on the back of the front plate. So we'll take This lever will come out. We got to get the E clip off of this one. Well, come on, little guy. down now to pretty much the where we'll take these off the uh, bird perch can't be removed uh, because it's uh, riveted on and squeezed with a here with a by machine start trying to pry these off you're liable to end up busting them so Leave it on. Okay. Now we'll do a little check for wear. Let me just see what's going on here. Okay, whatever with that rack was snagged on, that's what was keeping the strike mechanism from running. Sounds pretty smooth, actually. Just really dirty. Now we reach in here. Well, <laughs> whatever. Fuzz collects inside them. hair, brown hair, and another piece of fuzz, and okay, now let's check out for wear. gathering pallet. That's this right here. I can see it when I move the, the uh, it wiggles a little bit. Really not too bad. But I'd re I'll replace it with bushing in that one simply because if I don't Somewhere down the road, 10 years, it'll wear enough, it'll not work. We want to get this fixed so it'll last for 50 years. Okay, there's a bushing in the next wheel that, uh, I don't know if we'll be able to see that or not. Put the light up here. The hole that's immediately above the gathering pallet, probably can't see it. I'd replace these two bushings. All right, let me see on the run side. 
some magnification here. Actually, that doesn't look bad at all. That looks good. Let's look on the back side. On the side. Okay, second wheel on the back side. I'd do maybe the escape wheel as well. That's the second wheel on the run side here. Move that light over there. You can look right here. And uh, I don't know if you can see that or not. See it wiggling back and forth. That's the part that that's the wheel it would normally wear would be the second wheel. Then the escape wheel is here, and it's got some got some movement to it, so we'll replace those so it looks like four. There's a bushing here that's needed on the strike side. And after we clean it, we'll look at that second wheel. So maybe five or six bushings I should have. And in the meantime, it just, it really needs to be thoroughly cleaned. And so what we'll do right now is we will, first thing we'll do now is take it apart. And there are four nuts that we take off here. Mmm. Godzilla. Mm. Okay, we we'll take those four off. Okay. Got those off. Now once those are off, the only thing we have to look at now is we know that this uh, lever has to go back in. This is the lever that that uh, has got the warning uh, lever in. It's the lever that pushes the bird out, and it's also the lever that has uh, catches this little piece at the top that holds the door open so the bird doesn't come back in with each each cuckoo. So now when you pull this off, I, what we should do is we should look at uh, there should be a little club-like piece in there that pushes this back out. I can't see without my magnifier. Okay, it's just a little pin. It's a little pin that hits that. Okay, so let's see where that's at when that's at rest. That's going to be right there, and that lever is right there. There's the stop position, and that little button is, okay, okay completely opposite, okay, opposite. Okay, so when this is, all right, I got it. Okay. So here's what we do. Pull the plate off. And there we are. Here's the crutch. We'll take a look at the pallets. Okay. Good. Not even a groove worn in that. Good. That's in very good shape. So. We don't have to worry about that little guy. Get another container. So now we take the run side. And the run side that makes the cuckoo teeth keep time is this train here. There's the chain wheel, second wheel, and the escape wheel. Those three gears 
chain goes around this one, pulls on the chain, pulls on this, pulls on the, the escape wheel. And that is what the crutch and anchor ride on. That releases, swinging back and forth, releases these teeth one at a time. Okay, with three gears there, uh, somebody asked this question before. How do you know if you don't have the weights, how do you know if it's a one day or an eight day? Well, you know it's a one day when you see there's three gears here. If there were four gears, then it's likely an eight day. So we take this out, and we take this out, and we take this out. And that's your time train. Okay. This side is the side that controls the cuckoo. This little piece right here, when this lever drops in here, that keeps the cuckoo bird from coming back in until this is bumped by a, this little button, bumps this and knocks that back out so that uh, the bird can come back in. Alright, so we take that lever out. And now you've got chain wheel, second wheel, warning wheel, and the governor or fan. And that constitutes the train. That's the cuckoo side. They take those, well I can't take this gear out because the gathering pallet's on the other end of it. Yeah, we take that off. And then the only thing remaining is this one, which contains the, has the gathering pallet on it, and the center wheel. And if I'm to take these off, what I need to do is I need to pull this off, which I generally I don't like to do that because it makes it harder to get back on exactly right. Uh, wait for me to check that. If you take off this center piece, here's what happens. Right, the hand is on this shaft. Right now, it is lined up such that, well, maybe it isn't. Might be out of whack to begin with. Let's see if this way, yeah, okay. So that these cams are lined up so that this our minute hand will point at the 12 and the 6 when it sets the cuckoo off. But if I pull this off and then put it back on, I won't get it back on exactly those cams back on exactly the same as they are now in relation to how that hand goes on there. So then it's going to be off maybe five minutes, three minutes, whatever by however close I get that back to its original position. Then when I get it back on, I'm going to have to adjust this by turning this nut inside the hand. It should slip so that uh, we can make it cuckoo at exactly the right time. Awfully, awfully tight. Might not be worth trying to get that off. I don't generally like to take those off because they're pressed on there pretty tight. The gathering pallet, on the other hand, to get this one out is because uh, I've got to replace that bushing. It's got to come out anyway. So what I want to do is I want to take note of when the gathering pallet is in the is going to be in this position when it's at rest. So that is uh, level. The little pin over here is at about 5 o'clock. Okay. So this is the second wheel. Second wheel. And when the gathering pallet is this way,
I guess we lucked out. What? Right now it's 18 degrees. And as of right now, it's cloudy. There's no snow in the forecast. Supposed to be windy between 6 and 8 p.m. Tomorrow's supposed to be partly sunny. Wednesday, high winds. Thursday, cloudy. Friday, cloudy. Saturday, cloudy. Sunday, rain. There's no more snow in the forecast at all. Yeah, that's good. Not having to go out there. And... So, it's supposed to be very windy on Wednesday and very windy tonight for about three hours, it says. But they took all the snow out. Well, that's good. For the whole week. Oh, wait. Next Monday, there's some snow. Sunday rain. Well, Monday if we snow. get some rain and it gets up in the 40 over the weekend, like they said, well, at least melt some Tomorrow's of the Tomorrow's high is still supposed to only be minus 1. Yeah, well, the... Wednesday's thing, high minus 17. Thursday's high minus 10. Yeah, what's the lows for Tuesday? Minus 24, minus 31, minus 11. Oh, it's going down to 30 below then on Wednesday night, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cold. So I'm curious to see what the schools decide to do. That's hard to... Yeah, that's, uh, that's a little scary. That, uh, 30 below zero is, you know, that's getting, that, that's, that's scary cold. Just scary cold. you pumpkin Hi. look at taking another cuckoo clock apart cool what do you think huh mm -hmm. yeah and shall we look in here yep and say hi to everybody hi this is Lily she's gonna grow up to be a clock person too <laughs> <laughs> I love you, sweetie. I love you, too. How come? Because you're my grandpa. Yeah. You're my sweetie, Pumpkin. <laughs> Grandma's gone over there. Yeah. So what are you doing upstairs, huh? Making Valentine crafts. You're making Valentine crafts. That's pretty neat. Yep. That's pretty neat. So Grandpa's going to take all these pieces. Yeah. And we're going to put them Oops. into some cleaner and we're going to clean everything. Cool. What do you think about that, huh? Yeah. Uh, what do those pink lights do? They help. They make the plants grow. Oh. Do they have, like, sunshine in them or what makes them well, grow? Well, they, they have all of the frequencies of light that plants need. You see how it's kind of pink looking? Yeah. All right. Well, that plants need two two frequencies of light for good yeah. health. They need they need a broad spectrum. They need the white light, but they more important they need red light. Yeah. And they need blue light. Uh huh. Okay. So what happens? What color do you get when you mix red and blue? Uh, purple. That's right. That's exactly right. So we have red light and blue light, those bulbs and those lamps. Can... I heard ticking. Something's ticking. Yeah, there's a there's a clock movement up there that's running. Ah. So the red light and the blue light are the the two frequencies of light that plants need to grow well. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, there's uh, those lights have twenty blue LED lights in them. And they have 20 red LED lights, and they have 20 white LED lights. So many so, 20s. Yeah, so there's a total of, if there's 20 and 20 and 20, how many is that total? 
Uh, I'm not sure. Well, I haven't learned about that. Yet. How, well, how much would twenty and twenty be? Uh, I don't know. I can't well, count how twenty. Much, how well, much how much is two and two? Four. Okay. Well, if two and two is four, then twenty and twenty would be forty. Oh. Does that make sense? Yeah. This clock looks like the one upstairs. Yeah, it kind of looks like yours, doesn't it? Yeah, except these are bigger. Yeah, it's because this is what's called an eight-day clock. Oh, so it looks a big like a movement. cuckoo clock because it has... It, it a is a cuckoo, cuckoo clock. And an eight-day yeah, It is a cuckoo clock. Oh. You like fixing cuckoo clocks. Yeah. I yeah. like fix. I like cuckoo clocks, and I like to see watching. Yeah. Watching. That like one. Some. That one. I'm gonna pack up tomorrow. I'm gonna send it back to Minnesota. Oh. What's this little door? That's so you can get in and make adjustments in the, on the inside parts. Hmm. So that's a that's an eight day cuckoo clock that's going back to Minnesota tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, that's like a cuckoo clock with. With bigger um, acorns. Yeah, those are very, very heavy. They're 3.3 pounds a piece, or 1,500 1, Oh, yeah, grams. you're right. You'll be are, very careful. 1,500 grams. They are grams. heavy. Very heavy, yes. Much heavier than the ones on the one-day clock. I see your bucket down there. Yeah, you do. And there's the turtles over there. Okay, well, I'm going to get back to work here. You going back upstairs at Grandma? No. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, catch you later. Okay. Love you, sweetie. Love you. Okay, so now it's time just to get some cleaning done. We'll get them cleaned. Be back with you. I can throw them in the ultrasonic. Trying to do this one handed because I'm. Okay. Well, this has to go over in the other room. We have to rinse it all. start drying and then give them a little rub And we got to polish pivots and lathe. Run side. Boy, that got the gunk off. 
it's looking good. Okay, here's the crutch. Let's see what we got now. Oh boy, that's clean. Yeah. There's no real wear wear on that at all. That's good. No wear. Gathering pallet. Wheel. Our next step is to polish pivots. <coughs>
Okay, here's what I use now to do a final cleaning on the brass. It's not as harsh as things like brass, so but it removes the stains and it puts a little bit of a wax polish on it to keep it from tarnishing. And then I remove the residue uh, before it's put back together. I just put a little bit on a cotton ball. And then you can just remove the stains from the brass. Clean up the edges. It's very, very mild. It doesn't scratch anything. It just really polishes. It's used on uh, like vinyl showers, acrylic showers, and what have you. That easy to scratch so we know that this isn't going to scratch anything. <coughs> then I have a polishing bra cloth that I use. And you just And you can see that improves the looks of things a little bit. Cleans all the stains off. And we'll work with it that way. I get around nooks and crannies. I can take a soft bristle brush like this. Finish polishing this way. Just brushing any residue left. Do the same with the, the gears. We can take a, a piece of the cotton and just Clean the discoloration and stains off the brass. It'll keep it from tarnishing. Yeah, it just kind of cleans them up a little bit. Brush any residue off. This cleans them up. And in addition, as we're doing the gears, we put them under the magnifier. And uh, got a toothpick. Get some more toothpicks. <coughs> and I go around all the pinions and make sure there's nothing in there. And if I need to. I'll just put a little bit of that cleaner on the tip of a toothpick. You know, if there's any rust or what have you in the, in the gear, we just clean each leaf, polish it up. Any gunk out of there? Oh. That dries off. I'll take a brush. We'll remove any residue. Any 
remaining particles. And that way we end up with nice clean gears. All the junk out of them. So I'll continue cleaning these. Okay, now I get these cleaned. I put the three gears from the time side back in. And you see they run nice and smoothly now. But we've got to check for wear now that we have the pivots all cleaned. And I uh, just want to see what we got here. Look on the other side. And that second will be all I'd like to. Do something with that second wheel. We'll put a bushing in that. That's a little floppy. So is the escape gear a little bit. In fact, all three of these could be bushed. So we'll do that. Okay. We're doing the pivots holes for the for the crutch, the anchor. And so I've got to broach those out. So I need to get a brooch to do that. So I got a brooch in here. And we're going to put it in this hole. And we're going to brooch that out. And we'll keep testing this. jumping all over the place. Okay. Okay. Roach both sides. Of course, what we're doing is we're just continuing to fit. I can't see, you gotta use a magnifier. Yeah, just take some patience. I've been able to work all day today. Had electricity out for a good portion of the day. They're not close yet. Okay. The uh, battery ran out on my camera. I couldn't show you the rest of that, but we got the pivot points for the anchor redone. And uh, so I hooked it up temporarily just to see if it would run. And it does quite nicely, so we'll continue with bushing the other pieces. And we'll be let's take this back apart. Now let me check these again. Let me just see what we want to do. Okay, we've got a Bush this uh, second hole or second wheel, and we're going to do both the back and the front. They're a little sloppy, so we want to just tighten them up. The pivots are point uh, point eight eight point eight six, so we use a bushing. It's got a bore point eight zero, and we'll then broach them out to point the size of the pivot. So we need a the diameter of the bushing is 2.5 millimeters so we're going to need a 2.47 uh, reamer. Ream out the hole but before we ream out the hole we need to take our 
file and we need to file the unworn side of the hole slightly so that this will go to true center that's all we need and on the other side see where the worn side is. Yeah, I can see it on this side pretty clearly. I need to grind the side just a little bit with our file. And uh, somebody asked on another video, or about one of my other videos, what kind of file I'm using. And uh, let me back this off. This is called a Swiss pattern file, round form. The Swiss pattern files have a nice square. Uh, it's made by Grobet. And this is a, an, a round, a number two cut. And it tapers very nicely to fit into most of these, uh, these pivot holes and uh, file them away just a little bit. <coughs> So we've got this filed, and now what we're going to do is get our drill. We're going to drill out the holes with our reamer. Let me back off here. I guess that's as far back as I go. <clears throat> and so we're going to do the number two. Cut from behind, and we're going to ream that out slow, keep it straight. There's one drilled out, and we drill out the other one. Okay, drilled out. And now what we'll do is we'll take a <coughs> little chamfering tool. We'll just remove the burrs from the hole. It makes it a lot easier to put the put the bushing in. Okay. And then we're going to put a bushing here. And I'll tell you what I want to do. I'm going to take this post out of here. Get it out of the way. And now we're going to put a bush bushing in that hole. Let's get those out of here. The old floor. <clears throat> okay, we got one here. And we'll take this. And we'll put it oil sink side down. And I'll take my little hammer. And we're going to hammer that in. And over a hole. Once we have that bushing in there, <clears throat> we need to broach out the hole to fit. I have a very fine broach here. It's going in there. Create approach from the 
other side. Almost. That's better. Okay. I'm going to have to smooth broach that, but we're going to broach the other side first. Smooth brooch. <coughs> See if that's it. Oh, that's the one we want. Okay, so we put the smoothing brooch in. And then with the smoothing brooch, get it. oil. See if we have in shake and everything is 
is in good shape. So we put the plates back together. Really? hard to see it was hard to see if this escape wheel by looking at the shake through the, at the end of the plate uh, to see if it needed bushed but when I put it in its pivot hole and I move it this way see there's where the wear is that shouldn't move more than about four or five degrees. Yeah, that's moving at least 10, 12 degrees, maybe 15 degrees. So we need to bush this hole over here. Okay, all right, we have the run side, the time side, all bushed. And I'm just going to set it up, let it run overnight. Make sure everything's right. It runs overnight, now I know that everything is just fine. I've got one, two, I put six bushings in there, so every hole has been rebushed on the run side. I just, uh, oh, I'm sorry, eight bushings. I put eight bushings on the run side, including the anchor bushings, so we'll let her run. Okay, we're reaming out now for number one wheel. <clears throat> the chain wheel on the strike side and we need to 
Remus out with a four and a half millimeter reamer. quick chamfer. Take the bars off of those. And now we're going to put in the bushings that have a two millimeter bore. And I'll show you one. Like so. There we go. Okay, now we need to go over a little hole. Okay, that's even. And that puts the bushing in. Now we'll have to clean it up the front a little bit. But that's the way we're going to do it. And let's see, we've got front, front. Okay, so this end has to go in there. So we need to broach this just a bit. Okay, let's go. And now we'll uh, take the burr off. Take the burr off. And now I've got to get a smooth brooch. And I'll smooth brooch those out. Okay, get a smooth brooch. Shake, okay. Make sure it 
too smoothly. Okay, good. That is better than no. Okay. As well. And shake. That's what we mean by end shakes. It goes back and forth between the plates a little bit. Okay, so that one's done. Now I've got to uh, do the second wheel and the third wheel, front and back, and then we'll be done with the bushing. Right, now again, for the front, the bushing has an outside diameter of three, 3.5 millimeters, so I'm going to use a reamer that's 3.47 millimeters. We'll touch the hole. Slightly smaller than the bushing. And then the bushing is going to get pressed into that. Smooth broach it. No one's done. Okay, there's a smooth broach. It'll work.
Okay. Now, so far, let's see what we got here. We got that one. That's the third one. Let's put these two together. Get all the work. Excellent. Okay, we gotta work on this clock a little bit. In the case, numbers are kind of dirty. Front is off. You also need to clean the inside. And if you've ever done old cuckoo clocks, you smell them, they smell kind of musty inside. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed this wood a little bit with some linseed oil. And that'll also take away the uh, the odor that's in them, make it much more pleasant. We're going to clean these uh, clean this front up a little bit. It's kind of kind of dirty. So I'm going to get some of this cleaner again. <clears throat> again, this mild polish. like either cooking grease or cigarette smoke and uh, they're the one and three two and three have been cleaned see the difference you see what's coming off on the cotton so we'll just clean these numbers up get that smoke off or grease off whatever it is this is just a plastic dial. These aren't attached numbers. So. We can get these all cleaned up. And yeah, make it easier to read the numbers. And as. would argue not to clean that stuff, but that's the age on them. No, I don't call it age, I call it dirt. So, clean, my, clean this garbage all off. Just 
right up clean the outside rim. off of there. Put this back in a like new condition. That sure looks better. Now let's get here in the middle. Okay, looking good. Those numbers look a lot better. Nice and clean. The inside looks like there's some kind of beetle or something crawling around in here because there's some there's some uh, grimy little uh, droppings. So what I'm gonna do is take a brush. I'm just gonna brush this out of here into the trash bucket over here. Put a little spider web in there. Okay. Looks pretty good. Alright, next thing I'm going to do I'm going to coat the inside of this with uh, some linseed oil. Oh, I need to get some of that. Problem is this stuff lasts forever. And, uh, and don't need a whole lot. Put the linseed oil in the jar. And we're going to dilute that. bit of mineral spirits. And we'll speed the drying of the linseed oil. And to put this on now, I need to get a little chip brush. seals the wood. It's rid of the musty smell. It'll help keep the wood from cracking.
we can clean up the rest of the case the same way. A little linseed oil on it. I'm going to have to clean here. It looks like somebody painted without covering up the clock. I spilled some ceiling paint on here. I hung the clock up before the paint was dry. I'll take that paint off. Yeah, it's just latex. We'll see all that later. this wood a little bit. Yeah, it won't take long for it to dry. A little bit of plywood there. we have on here. Just need to do the same with this front. Okay. The other thing, uh, putting the linseed oil on inside that case is the uh, wood dries and it starts to dust, it kind of flakes and just makes dirt that can get into the movement by sealing it all up with linseed oil. We prevent a lot of that too. from getting rusty.
dirt out too. Better? How's it gonna look on the clock? cleaning of feather holes with toothpicks. Just making sure we have the last of everything out of them. Basically about ready to put these back together. Okay, we're gonna put this all back together. <clears throat> this is the run side. This is the strike side. Here's the front plate. Okay, so we've got we know that this has to go in beforehand. Okay, that one goes there. <clears throat> There's a main wheel here. Uh, second wheel. Before I do that, I want to check something out. <coughs> I want to make sure that the spokes on this star wheel, the lifter, two points are coming out this way. Basically, put that one in. Then, if we remember from the drawing that we made, when this goes in, this little knob needs to be down around 5 o'clock. So, uh, and this is the end of the uh, uh, gathering pellet goes on. So that's going to go in this hole. I need to change glasses. I can't see. Okay. All right. Then the warning wheel has a pin on it. That's going to go up toward the top when this is in this position then that has to be up toward the top that's where the stopping sequence is well maybe we'll get it in there okay and then of course we got the governor of the fan that goes in here maybe and then this lever has to go in this is the lever that uh, keeps the door open during the strike sequence and that's got to be able to move over this way so it's got to be above So, 
And now we've got a main wheel on the time side. Goes in here. We've got the second wheel. And that goes in here. We've got the escape wheel. And that goes in here. Like so. Now the only other thing we have to have actually between the plates is the uh, the anchor, the crutch, or the anchor with the crutch attached. And, uh, look at that one more time. Now we're ready to put the plate on, and this is the fun time. Thing lined up. And as we get these things started. Let's get some fastening nuts turned on so that those pulls can't slip back off. Okay. Come on, come on, come on, what in the hell are you hung up on? Oh, the little button, that ah, little button flew out of position, not happy with that. Where is it? Should be over there. Looks like we got everything back in. Find a couple more of these. Brass nuts. Should do it. Okay. Okay. 
That's over there. That's at the top. Okay, this is where we put the gathering pallet back on. Now just temporarily I need to have Temporarily put these two levers back on. I got the pin at the top because the weight is going to run this way. Put pressure on the drive wheel, the chain wheel, and this is in the slot of the gathering pallet, which allows this piece to drop down and catch the pin on the warning wheel. So if I lift this out of that slot it should run, which it does. Comes back to the slot, drops in, hits, catches the warning pin, and everything comes to a stop. So everything is lined up the way it should be, and uh, I can continue putting this together, and it should run just fine. So I'm going to take these levers back out, because what I've got to do is I have to uh, oil everything before I put anything else back in here. So, take these two levers back out. Now we're going to oil these. Okay, I've got clock oil in this cup. here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little oiler dip it in the oil and look through the magnifier and I'm going to put a tiny drop of oil on every pivot
Like everything is okay. Everything's oiled. No levers get oiled. And uh, they should fall freely. Everything else should be fine now. We'll put a drop here where that minute uh, pipe is going to run. Oh, and we should put a drop where the intermediate wheel will go, which is here. Okay. And that should be it. This is the little pin. It's got a groove right here. It goes over here in this hole. And what it does goes in a slot on the other side and it flops up and down. But this little lever here is what raises up catches that and like so and it keeps the door from going open or going shut when this is knocked out of the way that lever falls back down and then the door can shut so we're going to put that in and that's with a little tiny e-clip these things drive me nuts every time I have to do them Okay, let's try again. Where's our... Okay. Okay. Okay, got it on that time. I think to stay. Yeah, okay. Alright, that's on. Okay, now we get some levers to put on. We've got this one that goes on. And we've got this one that goes on. We've got this one that goes on. And those are all with uh, Eclipse as well. So we get got uh, This is the lever that rides on this minute or this cam on the minute shaft. This lifts like so. That ends up lifting this lever that rides in, that holds the uh, warning pin and rides in the uh, Rides in the uh, gathering pallet slot. So this one is going to go in here, like so, to be lifted by that cam and dropped. And then this one is going to go in here, and it's going to be. There, right in the cam, 
And those are both held on by Eclipse. Yeah. Let's try again. Come above and this lap. how they both go. So this lever lifts the other lever and that's how the minute hand cams controls the beginning of the strike cycle or the cuckoo cycle. So now we got to put Eclipse on these slots and they're right inside there. These should be a lot of fun too. If I can see. Oh, come on, magnetism. You are one royal. Pain in the patootie. it again. The older I get, the harder it is to handle these tiny little things. Come on. Get in there. There we go. Okay, now those levers won't fall back out. Those are in. <coughs> and now we got to deal with the snail and the rack and the intermediate wheel <coughs> and we have a little washer that goes over the intermediate wheel and we've got a couple more eclips okay what have I forgotten now oh, an eclip for here and an eclip for this one okay now this gets to be the tricky part it just tripped, that's half hour. So I want to turn this until it is on the, just trips the hour, which is the longer cam. And just as that trips, okay. When that trips, this, is going to go on but we kind of got to do the snail and the rack at the same time because when the snail goes on now we have to make sure that this rack tail falls in the middle of a uh, of a step on the snail and we're going to put this up Start sliding this on. Yeah, see, that's got to go on first. Uh, I gotta do this this way. Put this on. Then put this on. Set that at the 12. OK. 
Okay, that is just dripped. Oh, that's not what I want. I want that to fall all the way down. Pull that back out. I want that tail. Right in the middle. Lovely. Let's use the 11. I got it. 11 o'clock one because it's the smallest one. snail step just as the our cam has dripped so now everything is lined up right there and what we should do at this point now you can see how that rack works and that finally gets all the way to the top see before when that's on a tooth that won't allow this to fall all the way back in the slot but uh, like so, won't let it fall into the slot on the gathering pallet. But when the rack is all the way up, then this can fall into the slot on the gathering pallet. And right, now to keep this all together, this is the tricky part, getting this together. Now I want to turn this. Here's the little puppy. I need to get that snail out of the way. around several hours. Oops. Oh, you booger. Okay. Pull that back up. Get that snail out of the way. So that now I have access to the intermediate wheel. Where I can put this washer on. Okay, E-clip is there. Now the last E-clip goes on here to keep the, the uh, rack on. Okay, get it set. Doze in there. Okay. Again, my eyes are so bad right now. Okay, okay, clip is on. Okay, that's all back together. So if I go around. checking that out because the rack that rack is bent a little bit so I gotta bend it back it's missing the, the stop because it's bent slightly let's see if that's any better no no that's not uh, where it should be, so we'll bend her this way and make that adjustment till everything is lined up. Hmm. Whoa! I guess somebody tried to do a number on this because 
because that's bent all the heck too. But to use a screw screwdriver to straighten that one out. I can see that's bent. I may have to take that back off. Straighten it out. I may have did a number on that one. stop this time. Good, did. Okay. Right, now let's put some pressure on the wheel. Maybe. Yeah, okay, here. Run this around. I should go to half hour now. No, I went to full hour. Okay. How come it's not doing anything? Something is missing. Okay, I'll have to work on this a bit. Okay, this took a lot of messing around to get this squared away. Apparently somebody had worked on this before and really bent the living daylights out of a couple of the pieces of these levers so that uh, it was releasing the rack even on the half hour. Uh, so it was striking the hours at half hour and hour. Uh, this particular piece of the lever was bent to the point that it was allowing the rack to slip by completely even on the half hour. So by messing with it for a while, I finally found where the pieces were that were bent out of whack. Another piece was bent back here. So now it should work fine. It should strike the half hour now. There it's set. Nope. It's still slipped too far. Okay, we've got to do a little more messing here. Is that the hour cam that's up there now? Oh, that's because that was the hour cam. Okay. Alright, let me go around here. That's the hour cam. Okay. Now we got the half hour cam coming up, so we should have this strike the half hour. Oops. Well, it's locked again. Okay, now we should go into warning and should just strike once. There it is. The next one should be the hour. Should release the rack the whole way and now it should strike whatever the hour was. Okay, and that's doing fine. Okay, good. Everything's as it should be now. Now we can continue to put this together and put it back in a case and see what uh, how things work. The next thing to put back together are the uh, levers for the cuckoo bellows and the hammer and uh, notice that the cuckoo bellow wires are two different lengths the longest one goes on the bottom goes through a couple little slots here let me put this up here where it light is better little slots. I want to put this together. You put this in the hole. 
let the two little wires go through the slot and then let this rotate over that's installed short one goes next goes into the holes rotates over and finally the hammer goes in like so rotates over that's installed All right now in this case the hammer has a has a spring a strange looking little spring the little hook on the back of the hammer and then I'm assuming stretching it a little far but up here that's better that's better that's not quite so okay let's trip it again Hey, Charlie. <clears throat> okay. Cool, cool. Um, would you be able to come watch her for sure. a couple minutes? I just I gotta go to the bathroom. Absolutely. Time for a break anyway. I'm tired. Hold down here. Huh? Hold down here. Yeah, it is a little chilly.
Okay, we've got the bellows in now. Had to make some wires for those. Put those in. Let's trip this now and just see what it sounds like. Okay. Alright, let's see. Sounds good to me. Okay. 